everyone. Pastor Carl here with a word for the week. Like you, I've been kind of preoccupied in keeping a close eye on the events that are seem to be sometimes spinning out of control in our world these days. I'm coming here from uh, coming to you here today from our, the beautiful our beautiful church grounds, our 30 acres, and uh, such a peaceful and uh, gorgeous place just to kind of soak in the Lord. But the world seems to be kind of spinning almost out of control around us as we try not to watch too much of the news, but you can't help but miss the events that are going on. Of course, the past several months we've been dealing with this uh, COVID pandemic and that's affected all of our lives in one way or another. And then just recently this past week, uh, the events that took place around the uh, really horrible death of uh, George Floyd and then the nation's response of protests and riots and places, buildings being burned, grocery stores looted, all kinds of things that are taking place across our nation. And for most of us, it, it, it's unsettling to say the least. But for the Christ follower, we have some pretty specific directions from the Lord. I was trying to think about uh, what I wanted to share today, and I was reminded of Matthew 24 when Jesus talked about the kind of the end of time and his return. And it, it's really the most comprehensive part in Scripture that kind of prepares us a little bit for events that will take place. And You know, over the past 20 centuries, uh, there have been many times when people were just sure that Jesus was going to be coming back when some very tragic uh, internet or you know worldwide events took place. Um, but as of yet, he's not arrived. He'll come one of these days when we least expect it. The Bible, though, gives us some really good information and some really good detail on how we are supposed to respond to difficulties and the, the events that, according to the scripture, will continue to um, spin out of control almost from a worldly standpoint. And Matthew 24 really talks a lot about that. I want to just talk a little bit about some of the instruction that God gives the Christ follower as a result when he talks about uh, kind of the ends of times that will come. Again, Matthew 24 is that passage that really gives us uh, kind of some details of what, about what will happen uh, as time is winding down and Jesus is ready to return. And right at the end of the passage, he has a, uh, a word for those who are Christ followers, and it's the word watch, to be watching the events. And this particular word watch does not mean uh, kind of sit back and look at news or something like that, but it's an active watch. In fact, it, he goes on to say that the faithful servant and wise, the faithful and wise servant will be prepared and ready. He will be caring for the house that God has given him charge over. And that's where we come in. God has put us on this earth with some um, calling and responsibility to be a light and salt to those who don't know him yet and we have been given stewardship over uh, the incredible gifts of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and um, the commission to go into all the world and tell people so watching is not just sitting Matthew 25 he goes on and gives three parables and this is one of the things I love about the way Jesus teaches He'll first give us instructions, and then he'll tell us stories about what it should look like. So what, what is watching supposed to look like for the Christ follower in this day and age where lots of things are happening and, and uh, we're trying to observe? So he, gives, he tells three parables. He tells the first parable is the one of the ten virgins. And as a good friend used to say to me all the time, it's, it's not the ten Virginians, it's the ten virgins. And this is a very simple little parable about ten virgins that are waiting for the bridegroom to come. And it was late at night and, and uh, ten of them were wise and they thought ahead and they filled their lamps up with oil in preparation because they weren't sure how long the bridegroom would be. The other ten, or the other five, excuse me, five were wise, five were unwise and they weren't prepared. They did not fill their lamps up. They thought he was going to be coming sooner and so when their lamps ran out of oil, they were found themselves asleep and they missed the return of the bridegroom. The five wise virgins were invited into the celebration. And it's a picture, really oil almost always in scripture represents the Holy Spirit. So 
in, in response to Jesus saying, as times get wild, be watching. The first thing that we can learn from this parable is to be full of the Holy Spirit and power. And that's what oil represents. And we do that by spending time with Christ and spending time with his people in gathering together with the saints and in worship and in the study of the word and, and just communion with him. We fill ourselves up with his oil. So number one, let's learn. Let's watch by being full of the Holy Spirit. The second parable is the 10 talents. And this is the one where Jesus distributed a number of, of talents. And it's interesting that meant, of course, uh, it was a, a coin uh, denomination in those days. But we, of course, talk about talents and skills maybe that God has given us. So it has kind of a double meaning for us. The word is translated into English. And these 10 talents were to be used and invested wisely. Now, we know that two from this parable in Matthew 25, two of the servants were wise and they invested the talents that God had entrusted to them, different denominations. And when the Lord returned, he uh, commended them for investing his resources and doubling them. One was unwise and he was afraid and he buried that talent because he didn't know what how the master would relate. Well, for us, it's a, 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 a obvious picture is that we are to take what God has given us and invest it in his kingdom to make the very most of what God has given each one of us individually. And that differs. Some have been given some kind of talents. Others have been given very different skills and abilities and calling. But each one is responsible to take what he's been given and invest it into kingdom matters. When he came back, he commended the two. And uh, the one that was, um, was fearful he had him cast out. And this is not a time to be afraid, folks. We have uh, the Lord Jesus Christ on our side. It's not a time to withdraw in fear, but to step forward. The third parable is the one about the sheep and goats. And in this parable, Jesus talks about when he returns that people will be divided into two segments, sheep and goats. And the question was asked, what differentiates a sheep from a goat? And Jesus said, here's how you know the sheep. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was a stranger, you took me in. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was sick, you visited me. And when I was in prison, you came to me. And then the people responded and said, when did you, when were you here? We, we didn't see you here. And he said, uh, when you've done this to the least of my children, you've done it unto me. In other words, the, the final thing in this explanation of how a Christ follower should be watching actively is by serving, serving those who are in need, by taking, making the most of this time when people are, are kind of very uncertain and, and the world seems to be going crazy. This is a time for the church to rise up and to be the very hands of Christ and minister to people who are hurting and naked and wherever the, wherever you find them in your neighborhoods or in downtown uh, Spokane or in different cities uh, around where you find people that are in need that we, we reach out to them and serve them and bless them in Jesus' name. And the Bible tells us when we do that to them, we're doing it to Jesus himself. So just in a review here, how is a Christ follower supposed to actively watch during times of turmoil and stress? Number one, by um, watching actively, being faithful with, with the, uh, to oversee what God has given us as faithful servants. That's in the end of Matthew 24. At the beginning of Matthew 25, to, to be full of the presence and the Spirit of God and be uh, even more so than ever, be full of His uh, wonderful presence in your life through worship, through prayer, through times of communion with him and with gathering together as the saints and then by serving those who are in need and there is no lack of need around us it is there if we'll open our eyes and serve it serve him so these are difficult times they're concerning times but they're exciting times because it's a time for us to rise up and really be the church and be the hands and feet of christ himself hey it's been great to be with you fear not jesus is in control have a great day god bless